Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today I got an email from Rod in Birmingham, Alabama. Rod, hi. I hope you're a subscriber. He told me that he just got a snapper 28 inch high vac and he's replaced every moving part on it but he has two issues that he needs a little help with. One is removing the steering wheel. I sent him an email on that. The second is removing the pilot bushing. It's froze up and he can't get it apart. That's a little harder to answer in an email. So sometimes I'll call the person. I think it'd be a lot easier if I just show him and everyone else that's having a problem with this the best way that I found to get them apart. Let me spin you around. I have my snapper behind me, or behind you, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sorry, I'm doing this by myself. I always do, so the camera work sometimes is a little funny. <coughs> now, to get started, <clears throat> And to get this thing off, it's almost as much work getting ready to do it as it is to do it. The first thing I do is I take the mower deck off and get it out of the way. It's a lot of extra weight that's going to give you a problem. Take the battery out. You take out all of the wiring, the solenoid, the controller for all your safety switches. Take all that stuff out of here. You're going to be heating this with a torch. All the wiring and cables have to come out of your tube because that you're going to have to pull completely out. Now on top of some of these machines, there's a plate right here. I shifted this. Well, I think I better leave it in fifth. I'll pull the camera over here maybe. On the top of this machine, I have a plate right there with two bolts that captures the clamp around the tube. Whenever possible, I don't try to disturb the clamp on the tube because it just ruins the customer's paint. I take this plate off. Okay, now you got the mower deck out of your way. You got all the wiring and cables out of your tube. Got your battery out. You got all the wiring out of here. I take the seat off. I don't want to melt the seat. I take the gas tank off. You don't <laughs> sure don't want to melt a hole through that, especially if it's got gas in it. And I try to drain the gas out of the line and carburetor so I don't have any fumes. Sometimes I've even taken the engine off just to get it out of my way. Then I'll get the thing out in my yard. I will hook something to the back of the machine. If it straps around the axles or if I hook to the trailer hitch, something and tie it to a tree or the back of my truck. Then I'll take a torch and I will heat this pipe down inside of here. And if you're using a little propane torch, buy the MAP gas. You may need two cans. If you have an oxygen acetylene torch, perfect. You're going to get that hot. You've got to get that hot enough to melt that plastic pilot bushing. And when it starts to melt, you will see plastic oozing out underneath the clamp. Then you want, if you got some help, that's perfect. Keep heating the tube and go back and forth from one side to the other and try to heat it evenly all the way around. Once you see the plastic bubbling, you grab a hold of the front end, not the steering wheel or the steering shaft. They will bend. Grab a hold of the front end and twist and pull at the same time. It'll slide out. 
Then when you get that done, sorry I got bad knees and I can't kneel. Once you get that done, this, this is normally where I grab onto is underneath between the two front tires or maybe onto this. Never pull or push on this or the steering wheel. If you're trying to move your machine around in your garage, grab onto this. These bend way too easy. Once I get it out of there, now you have to clean it. Keep heating, you heat the tube up or I should say the melted bushing on the tube with your torch and use a putty knife and scrape that off. I bought a wide, wider than an inch putty knife. <clears throat> I heated it up and I bent it to the curvature of the pipe. That way I can use it to scrape the melted plastic off of the outside of the pipe and I can also heat the tube and scrape the melted plastic out of the inside of the tube. You have to clean all that crap off. That's the downfall. It's the only way I found to get them apart that's quick and semi-simple. Then I use, when I put it back together, I use anti-seize lubricant from Permatex. It's not, I won't say that, I'll say I don't think it's the same as regular anti-seize. Maybe it is and they just put different labeling on it so us guys will buy two bottles instead of one. But I always use the one that says lubricant on it. I don't know, I think maybe it stays semi what? I don't even know what to say. Uh, it doesn't harden up. It stays more figured out. <laughs> it doesn't harden up on you as quick as a regular anti-seize does. I don't know. But that's how I do it. And uh, sometimes it's very simple. You don't have to put a lot of heat to it. And other times I've had to melt that sucker really good to get it to slide out. Uh, what causes that problem is your climate, if it's damp and uh, moist area, or if you leave your machine outside, that's half the issue. The other problem is if you have a nice flat yard and this thing never pivots, that's when they lock up. My yard is so bumpy and uneven, I never have a problem with mine seizing up on me. But I keep it coated with that lubricant. And if I get bored some summer, I pull that thing apart and I re-clean it. I put more lubricant on it and I put it back together. It's just a little, it's how much preventative maintenance you want to do to your machine to keep them running for 20 or 25 years. And if you take care of these things, they will run that long. So if you have any other questions, please send me an email. I answer every single one I get. If I send you an answer and you're still not sure, send me another email. I work back and forth with a lot of guys. So Rod, I hope this helps. I hope it helps a bunch of other guys too. And uh, until next time, work safe, have fun, and Rod, let's get this thing apart. We'll talk to you soon.